In Logic Pro for iPad, you can use automation to do everything from volume fade ins and outs to controlling specific parameters of third-party plugins. In this video, I'll show you how it works. There are two different types of automation in Logic Pro for iPad. Track automation that you can access in the tracks area here affects an entire track and any regions that are on it. And region automation that you can access from the editor window is embedded in a region. Delete or overwrite the region and you'll lose the automation. Region automation is especially useful for automating instrument parameters like an electric piano's expression pedal, for example. I'll be mostly sticking with track automation in this video though. When you tap the automation button, the tracks view will change and you'll be presented with some new control options. The track lanes show the automation curves. The track headers show three new components. The automation mode pop-up menu, the automation parameter pop-up menu, and the automation value field. The function buttons in the tracks area menu bar change to a set of four automation related buttons. Move, Pencil, Brush, and Curve. There are two ways you can create automation in Logic Pro for iPad, writing and drawing. Writing automation in real time means changing the controls in a channel strip or plugin while playing back your project and recording those changes as automation data in real time. On this track, I have a third party synth instrument loaded up, BA1, that has a really cool battery drain effect. If I want that drain effect to take place gradually over the course of a few bars, I can tap the automation mode button in that track's track header, select touch, move the playhead to the desired point of the project, bring up the synth interface, then hit play. As the track plays back, if I slowly reduce the battery slider, the effect will become stronger. Once done, if I hit stop, you can see the automation parameter has changed to the BA1's battery effect, and the automation points have followed my slowly activating the effect. Because I have automation in touch mode, the parameter has snapped back to the original value afterwards. If I were to repeat the process in latch mode, the effect would carry on after I stop touching the effect slider. Drawing automation means affecting the parameters of a track, instrument, or effect after the fact. You draw the automation curve using touchscreen gestures with your finger or an Apple Pencil. To draw automation, you'll first need to select a parameter to automate from the Automation Parameter menu and select Read from the Automation Mode menu. You'll then need to select a method of drawing from the function buttons at the top here. Let's say I wanted to have this track's volume fade in and automate its panning so that it alternates between the left and right speaker. I need to select volume from the automation parameter menu and then select a method of drawing from the function menu. I'll choose the pencil as I find that a bit easier to use. If I then pop an automation point at the start of the region and another at the end of the region, and then tap, hold, and drag the first point down, leaving the second at the desired volume level, let's see how that sounds. Perfect. For the panning, I need to select Pan from the main submenu inside the Automation Parameter menu. 
Now, I want this to gradually shift from the left speaker or headphone to the right, so I'm going to use the brush tool. Now, if I tap and hold on the automation curve, I can then paint in the automation needed. And here's how that sounds. You can also use automation to trigger specific parameters in plugins. On this track, I want the auto filter plugins cutoff to gradually increase to create a cool intro sound. To do this, I need to tap on the automation parameter menu again, then tap on auto filter and select cut off from the available automationable parameters. Automationable? Is that a word? Who knows? Anyway, this time I'll use the pencil to create two points, one at the start of the region and one at the end of the second region. If I then select the curve function, I can tap and drag on the automation line and create a curve, which will probably result in a slightly more dynamic and interesting result than a simple straight line would have. If I didn't want a curve and simply wanted the cutoff to suddenly switch from 0 to 100%, I could tap on the stepped automation button and then tap on the curve. Automation is a really powerful tool once you get to grips with it, as is working with several different time signatures in a project. More on that here. 